So how dangerous is the mindset of a Jehovah's Witness or any cult member? I think we know the answer of that one. That's a no-brainer. Be right back. How you doing, guys? It was early 1997. I'd been working at this very small restaurant out on the island at the time, and we had heard on the news about the Hale-Bopp Comet that makes us rounds around the Earth about every 2,000 years. So every night, we about sunset, we would head outside to see if we could spot it, which we did. We thought. I mean, it didn't look like a comet with the naked eye, but then again, if you're trying to compare it to a Hollywood comet, it's not going to. But nonetheless, we were out there every night trying to spot it. It was around this same time, late March of that same year, that we had heard on the news about the, what was the name of it? The Heaven's Gate organization, which basically was a cult run by uh, Marshall Applewhite. You remember Marshall Applewhite, Stephen Lett's cousin from, uh, yeah. Anyways, we'd heard about this crazy mass suicide, I guess it was like 39 people in all, that basically axed themselves because they thought they were going to hitch a ride on a UFO that was hiding behind this comet. Crazy as it sounds, what's crazier is that people actually went for it and they voluntarily poison themselves because the leader, Marshall Applewhite, told them that they would have to be transformed. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? To get to this UFO, to get to what they referred to as their paradise. It was crazy. I mean, how many times does history have to repeat itself before it sinks in? Because it was just about a little over 20 years earlier when a very similar scenario happened in Guyana, I'm talking about Jonestown and the People's Temple, where Jim Jones, after a U.S. delegation was going to investigate them to find out about the abuses inside of this organization, which they were quite a few, well, upwards of 900 people, most of them voluntary, others were forced to commit suicide. And they had the poison cyanide lace Kool-Aid. Hence the expression, don't drink the Kool-Aid. And yet 20 years later, it happens again. Uh, I think we've all seen Elizabeth Vargas' uh, expose on A&E several nights ago. And King of Fetus, it was the first one who mentioned this. And that was something I had never noticed. That was the first time a mainstream show had labeled Jehovah's Witnesses a cult. We all know it is, and we've heard people individual call it a cult, but this is the first time that it wasn't called an organization, a religion, or a church. It was flat out called a cult. And I think after this year's memorial, we found out just how dangerous Jehovah's Witnesses can be. I mean, they were getting quite violent with the uh, Hall Invaders. And uh, if you look back uh, several weeks ago, what happened with the San Diego protesters, they were, it was literally nipped in the bud. Now, the San Diego protesters didn't fail. What happened shows that what they were doing was actually working. I mean, basically, they were asked to leave right off the bat. We all know that. Of course, they couldn't stop the banner that was flying around overhead, could they? But after the memorial, and personally I've seen some, uh, yes, Jehovah's Witnesses can be dangerous people. <clears throat> they have an extreme hatred for anyone outside the organization. And the one thing that's been pointed out, especially several videos with the San Diego protesters, they will forgive a pedophile with open arms. They will sit right next to them, 
they will forgive him long before they forgive an apostate. Me, what I'm doing now is an unforgivable sin. A child molester will be forgiven. But uh, back to what I was talking about, the mass suicides. Not saying that Jehovah's Witnesses are ever going to fall into that category and have a mass suicide of how many million people are left. But my question is, how many indoctrinated Jehovah's Witnesses would actually take their own lives if their governing body asked them to? said, this is new light we got from Jehovah. He wants to spare you the great tribulation, but you will have to take this Kool-Aid. Uh, a lot of Jehovah, we already know, thanks to Denise Hedberg, that there are many, many Jehovah's Witnesses in the kingdom halls that are fully awake. They would be the first to say, screw this, I'm out of here. But how many indoctrinated JWs would take their own lives if the society told them to. I know like, they don't like to be called the society now, but tough shit. So how many of them would take their own lives? I don't know. I, I'm afraid I know quite a few that would. I also know quite a few that would not. I mean, we know that people are leaving in record numbers right now, and the organization is on its way out. It's being exposed. Uh, Elizabeth Vargas, just last week, Leia Remini coming up, Dateline several years ago, W5 this past few months ago. So now the mainstream media is picking up on the abuses going along in this cult. But let's face it, anybody who has that mindset, that cult mindset, is a dangerous person. Not only to themselves, but to other people around them. I found that out my last few months, just how tightly squeezed their brains are and I'm not going to go into it because I've gone into it in the past videos but I realized just how dangerous these people were and believe me uh, I'm always looking over my shoulder because I don't trust these people I mean who knows what kind of new light they're going to come up with in the next few months but we all know that their new light is BS and the entire time I've been in the organization there was never anything new. It was all just more redressed bullshit. And I finally realized that a group of people that isolates themselves the way they do, uh, much like the people's temple isolated themselves the way they did, uh, David Koresh, his people, or Heaven's Gate, or any other cult member for that matter, when you isolate yourself like that, and you are in that mindset, Scientology, no different. Mormons, no different. But when you keep yourself isolated from society, everybody outside this organization is your enemy. And this is the mindset that they have. I can't speak about Scientologists. I can't speak about Mormons. I can't speak about any other cult that I know nothing about or I was not a member of. But I do know about Jehovah's Witnesses, and I do know they are a cult. And all cults basically utilize the same tactics. And I do know for a fact that the JW mindset is quite a dangerous mindset to themselves and anyone around them. If by chance you are a Jehovah's Witness Bible study coming across this video, do yourself a favor. There's a reason why we're all out here. Okay, We know what you won't know until after you're baptized. Don't be afraid to do your research, even though they frown you down on it. Do your research. Look up what happened with Heaven's Gate. Look up what happened with uh, Jonestown, okay? Cults are cults, okay? And they are very dangerous. Not only physically, but mentally, okay? Do yourself a favor, do your research, and get the hell out. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. And uh, if you come across this video, hit the notification button. I'd like to thank my subscribers and thank you for coming across this video and letting me in. Anyways, guys, I will talk to you soon. You have a good day.